Good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm really pleased to be here, and thank you all for coming out tonight. It's, it's an honor to see this many people who really care about the county and what we do in the county and who represents you. Um, it's important to be involved, and thank you all for being involved. Um, sometimes it's a little bit uh, of a challenge to get involved in, in local politics, not just local, but statewide and even um, countrywide. We have all have our challenges, and I was, I'm, I'm very happy to speak on behalf of, of Kevin. I've known Kevin before he ever ran for office. He and I were competitors in, in business at one time, and I found him to be very honorable, and we didn't, we didn't become enemies. Uh, we just both worked hard, and I got part of the business, and he got part of the business, so, and we're still friends. Um, but I would like to say on behalf of um, Senator Corbin that he, he is a 100% positive representative for all of the people in Graham County. He works well across party lines to um, do the best thing and get the highest and best use for your tax dollars on, on every level that he possibly can. He is a born-again Christian and happy to say so. And I'm pleased to announce that for him. He is, um, he is a pro-life person. Uh, core out. I know the first um, flyer that I ever saw when I learned that Kevin Corbin was running for office had the picture of a tiny baby on it. And of course that touched my heart. I, it's, well, I'm pro-life as well. Um, he was two years your representative in the House and now has been two years your representative in the Senate. During that time, Kevin has, uh, that I know of, that I'm aware of, he has brought, uh, just in the last year, $5 million into the, into the county to help us build the jail that we have been ordered to build and need to build here in this county. And he has brought $1.175 million for, I will call it downtown revitalization, uh, one million dollars, one million one hundred thousand dollars is to rebuild the old wall that is falling down uh, on Main Street. So that will be a, a big boost for the people who come in and want to see a, a pretty little town, like we want to see a pretty little town as well. He's been a champion for um, Medicare expansion. He has been a champion for mental illness. Uh, he, that's another place that he has really worked hard across party lines is to uh, get some facilities for the people who need uh, mental health care and he continues to do that uh, today. He also um, is for, I don't know if I said he was for Medicaid expansion, but he is. He's very pro-constitution. 20 seconds. Um, he uh, advocates for you on every level throughout this, throughout this state, not just in your region, but throughout the state and all the way to Washington. He's a super advocate for the veterans. When I need someone to help here and I can't find anyone, I call Kevin. And he can get through to Washington for me uh, when, when I can't do that. He's also been a champion for Graham County Schools. And on his behalf, I thank you once again for coming out, and I know that he would appreciate your vote, and you can expect him to continue to represent you on an individual and a collective basis. All right, Mrs. McCracken, the question was, um, <laughs> you have 22 minutes to introduce yourself. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you. You're on a roll. <laughs> so throughout my life, the people around me who are making a difference, they told me that I could make a difference too. They also told me that don't just curse the darkness, but light a candle. So a lot of us are concerned about the direction our state is headed. A lot of you are probably concerned too, since you're here. And so I'm lighting a candle by running for North Carolina Senate. I'm Karen McCracken, your candidate for North Carolina Senate. Now extremists, they want to divide us. 
They want to use fear to manipulate us and turn us against each other. But they don't understand mountain values. So, uh, like Lynn and Cody, then uh, I live in Stokoa. Uh, this is my husband over here. And uh, we were at the Stokoa Valley Center today. Uh, they had a big festival. And while at the Stokoa Valley Center, then I met someone from Tuskegee. So, maybe uh, one of your neighbors there. Oh, uh, or Natasha. Yeah, one of your neighbors there in Tuskegee. His name is Dave. And so uh, Dave has been part of our community for nine years. And so I asked him, what is it that you love about Graham County? And he's like, well, of course I love the mountains. I love that we have seasons. Because he was from Houston where they only had one season, mm -hmm. hot and humid. So, but he said, what I really love about Graham County is the people. Because he got mountain values. Our mountain values are that we believe in working hard and looking out for each other. We don't believe in kicking each other when we're down, but when you're down, you give a hand up. That's what we do as mountain folks, is that we come together because we know that if you work hard and act responsibly, you deserve a chance at your version of the American dream. And so that's why I'm running, because I believe that each of us deserve a shot at the American dream. We, just, we need to work hard, work together, look out for each other, and live these mountain values. And so if you likewise share these mountain values, I ask you to vote for me. Let's get cracking. Vote for McCracken. Uh, Ms. McCracken, you get this question first. Um, this is going to be a little, uh, we have questions for incumbents and questions for challengers. We have a proxy incumbent here. So, uh, <laughs> um, so we'll just have to run with it. Um, so, Ms. McCorkin, how have you prepared to become a state senator? Okay. All right, so have any of y'all ever been on the Policy and Bylaws Committee? Do any of you want to? Like, if anybody's taking volunteers, hey, can I be on Policy and Bylaws? Please meet me. me. <laughs> oh, we got one over there. All right. This is something that I'm good at and I have experience at. Now, most of us are like, please, no, any committee but that. But that's something that I've done and done well. So uh, when I was doing my internship in South America, then uh, the guy that was housing me, he, his church was redoing their bylaws. And so I went through all of this rough draft that they had of bylaws and put it in um, outline order, making sense of it. For most of us, this would be boring. I found it very educational. Also, in my young adult years, then I served as a representative for my church with our state association meetings and our state, um, the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina, with those meetings. So I was part of voting for or against bylaw changes and policy changes. And uh, like my friend D. Hank Benchel, I want to do my research and know what I'm voting for. And then uh, later on, I served with uh, Southwest Area Resort Ministries on their board. For 10 years, they said, we've got to update our policy about who's going to be a voting member of the board. It got done when I was on the board. They said, Karen, we've been working on this 10 years. It got done. I also served with Women's Missionary Union of North Carolina on their executive board. And so there have been several things that were going on that they're like, hey, we need to address this. When I was on that committee, it got done. We also had COVID that came along. And so a lot of our policies had to be updated to address emergency situations. And so the policy committee, which I was the chair, we got it done. We updated those policies. Now most of us, think, oh golly, that's boring, but for your Myers-Briggs folks, then I am an S, which means I'm a detailed person, so you give me these policies, I'll go through them and make sure they're done correctly, 
And one more thing is, um, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Myers Briggs as um, well. Anyway, oh, oh, most important thing. I right, see so you mentioned Medicaid expansion. I do. And this is something that Kevin and I agree on is we need to pass Medicaid expansion. But about 12 years has passed and it hasn't been done. The House and the Senate have been playing uh, whack a mole. The House passes a bill, the Senate passes a bill, the House just passed another bill. When I go to the Senate, we will pass Medicaid expansion. We will get it done. Send that bill to the governor for him to sign it. Thank you. Let's get cracking, but when we're cracking. Mrs. Orr, um, what has uh, Senator Corbin's major accomplishments been during his term in office? Um, some of his major accomplishments are um, raises for teachers in school. He has, he has fought the um, idea of having to hire a, an individual teacher for one student because of, of class size. I know he has worked with all the, the schools in the areas to bring funding to them. Um, and all of, all of the, the counties that he represents, have he's been able to bring a, I don't know how much funding. I just know Graham County, uh, but the other the other county there, there's no county left out. You can go to any county in uh, Western North Carolina that knows and has been represented by Kevin Corbin, and most of them will be able to tell you how he has helped them in their communities and in the area uh, of their concerns, their their biggest needs. Okay. Uh, and I do sit on the oversight site, I do. <laughs> I don't have that here, but I started to. Okay. Um, so you're the next question. Let me do this matrix here. <laughs> if there's a proxy, and just a second. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how do you. Uh, Mrs. Orr, I'm not sure how you would answer this question, not being Mr. Corbin, uh, about what his, what his agenda is and how does he accomplish that? Uh, what is his major projects? Where do, what are his priorities? I know that Medicaid expansion is, uh, is a priority for him. Broadband is a priority. Uh, workforce is a huge priority for him. Um, rehabilitation of the workforce. The uh, opioid crisis, he's very involved and has been very involved in, in the lawsuit with uh, the pharma companies and has been key in bringing um, those funds into all of the counties that he represents. Um, another um, top priority of, of Kevin's is that he represents every single individual. And, and that doesn't include any um, consideration of party. He represents the people. Oh, you don't get that question. Yeah. You're not an incumbent. I'm sorry, Randy. We're making this tough to Well, I guess you do sort of get that. What is your what is your agenda, <laughs> and how would you carry it out? What are your priorities? All right. So my life agenda is to glorify God. I'm on a journey of loving God and loving others. And where God what God has put in my heart for my role in His kingdom is to look out for the most vulnerable, uh, because the day is stacked against us where. The rich and powerful have set the rules so that they gain more wealth and power. And a lot of us feel that the deck is stacked against us, that we're, we're feeling marginalized, that people aren't listening to us, that extremists are changing things so that other folks, they're getting the benefits and we're getting the shaft. And so what I want to do is I want to go to the North Carolina Senate and look at our system and say, where do we need to make changes so that if you work hard and you play by the rules you act responsibly, 
then you deserve a shot at the American dream as you see it. But a lot of times, that's not how the world works. That if you work hard, what do you get? More work. More work for less pay. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that all of us have the freedom to thrive because each of you matters. And so that's what I want to do is I want you to know that you matter. And when I go to Senate, then that's my agenda is to make sure that you get your fair share and you get your fair shot at achieving your version of the American dream. All right. Um, Ms. Kraken, this question is to you. Um, a little bit of an example. So we were talking about how the uh, the state legislature increased pay for teachers and faculty, that kind of thing. Uh, Mrs. Orr will know what I'm talking about here. That did not include uh, compensation for benefits. It also didn't include uh, pay or benefits for a lot of other people on faculty who also needed to get their pay bumped. So what it seemed like was that they were getting a raise. However, most of that, a lot of that financial burden was put on the counties. And it required the school board to go before the county asking for additional money. Uh, what, this is called a unfunded state mandate. Um, do, do you need further clarification on what that is? OK, so if you were uh, in the Senate, how would you represent Graham County and help protect it from unfunded state mandates. Yes, yeah, so I'm familiar with the unfunded ma mandate. So uh, some of you may be old enough to remember when uh, George Bush uh, passed No Child Left Behind, which was an unfunded mandate. And so uh, a lot of the burden went down to our local counties who uh, already struggled to try to keep the taxes down to keep the benefits high for our local folks. Um, so, you know, Jacob, you know about how hard it is where you have all these regulations that the state says we have to fund that, and then we've got this little bit left over to try to budget that wisely to make the best use of our tax dollars. So, no, I do not believe in unfunded mandates that if you're going to make a mandate, then you need to fund it and not expect other people to do your dirty work for you. So, as far as... Um, teacher pay and our support staff. So I'm going to tell you about Miss Kate and I'm going to try not to cry. I just want to tell you that you matter. Miss Kate was the lunch lady and she learned every kid's name. And so when you went through that lunch line you paid for your lunch, she said and she called you out by name and wished you a good day, gave you a word of encouragement. We need people like that who invest in our children. Today I was talking with uh, a guy over in uh, Jackson County that teaches in Macon County. And uh, in Macon County, where our, the incumbent is from, then he has, he's a teacher, but he has a bus license. And so he is a substitute bus driver. So when there's call outs, then he has to get up earlier, go do a bus drive route, teach a full day of classes, and then take the kids home. And he said, yeah, I get paid some, but it really is not worth the liability. Plus, there's a time factor that he's got to do a whole day's work plus another whole day's work as a bus driver. He's having to work two jobs. And that's not right. We need to find employees and keep employees. And so I just asked him, what do we need to do to keep you as a teacher? And he didn't say, well, you know, I wish I was making a few thousand dollars more. No, he said he didn't want to top out. That the longer he stays, then each year he should get a raise. And so that's what we've been doing is teachers have been topping out. And they're like, well, if I just stay here, I'm not going to make any more money. I can go somewhere else. So we need to show teachers that we appreciate them and appreciate their longevity as they continue to learn. So when they do continuing education, then they get a bonus. When they get higher degrees, then they get a raise accordingly. We need to show our teachers that we appreciate them and appreciate our custodians. 20 seconds. 
and appreciate our cafeteria workers because all of them work together to take care of our kids and give them the quality education that they deserve. Mrs. Orr, how would uh, Senator Corbin protect Graham County against unfunded state mandates? Uh, Senator Corbin has served several years on the, on the school board in Macon County, so he certainly is well versed in, in the challenges of, of the school systems. Uh, he continues to work across lines. Kevin is definitely against unfunded mandates uh, and is working uh, both sides of the aisle to prevent that from uh, that bill from being passed down to the local taxpayers. And one in particular that he cares about is Graham County because of our diminished tax uh, right here in this county. He's very empathetic with that. And we see that on many levels when he's working with us and with our schools. I'd like to say that um, the board that I work with, and that would be Jacob Lynn, uh, Keith, and Dale. When, when the school, when this school needs something from this county, uh, we like to step up. And, and I will speak for this board, and we have always gotten um, support on every level that, that uh, Senator Corbett can come through for us with. He's never turned us down on a, on a request for a meeting. Uh, he's open in discussion, and he's, his phone number is available to any of us. And certainly, the school system is one of his top priorities. And like I said, he will continue to work with anyone who will work with him. You, you should be on the Senate floor sometime and hear him talk about unfunded mandates and, and uh, money coming to the school systems. You'll be very proud of him. Uh, Ms. Orr, this one's to you. Uh, you have two minutes for closing. Well, all right. <laughs> Thank you all for letting me do this. I appreciate it. Um, I would just like to say, in, on behalf of, of Kevin Corbin, I, I ask uh, for you to vote for him. Um, I think that you will not ever find a more dedicated representative. He, um, first of all, he, he trusts God, and he prays for you. He, he cares for you on every level, income, physical, uh, all levels of not just government. He cares about the individual person. He's someone that you can count on, and I hope come election time that you will vote for the person who you know for certain is working on your behalf and will continue to represent you. Ms. McCracken, same question. Not a question. You have two minutes to close. Okay. So, Sir Isaac Newton said that if he could see further than others, it was because he stood on the shoulders of giants. And that's a lot of how I feel. When I was a kid, my dad said that uh, Irene Hooper was a mover and a shaker. And as a kid, I didn't know what that meant, but it sounded like fun. So I, I observed her life. And I saw how she moved people into cooperative action to shake up the status quo, to make her community better. And I said, that's how I want to live. Then uh, when I was a young adult, then I got to get to know Ruby Fulbright. She's my hero, and she knows my name. So Ruby Fulbright, she was the executive director treasurer for the WMU of North Carolina. And I saw her handle conflict with poise, with dignity and grace. I was like, wow. And so I, I tried to be close to her, so hopefully some of that would rub off on me. And then also this lady right here. Um, so um, years ago, I thought maybe I could be a county commissioner. And so I went to the county commissioner meetings with Connie Moore, Connie Moore on the board. And so as I watched you guys, as you would talk about the different issues, and when Connie spoke, it was different because she spoke with such knowledge about each of the issues. And so there's no, I mean, it's no mistake that uh, my opponent here chose Connie to be a spokesperson. I mean, I mean, God, who else would you pick? I mean, who else is more knowledgeable and handles herself 
so well. And um, so I'm honored to be on the stage with you. My show as well. Thank you, Karen. And so, um, so when I'm elected, then I don't want to forget where I came from, but I want to honor the legacies of the people who have gone before me. People who have invested in me and believed in me. And I want to do that the same thing for the next generation. That they will know that they matter and that they, if they work hard and act responsibly, they too can have the freedom to thrive and can have their opportunity at achieving the American dream. Introduce yourself and describe yourself to the audience. Uh, Mr. Hoxick, you go first. My name is Brad Hoxick. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. All right, it's the same format as we've been using all night long. Questions are slightly different for the middle two, uh, depending on whether you're incumbent, depending on whether you're uh, specifics of the office. Um, but the first question is a simple one. It's your time. Two minutes to describe, to introduce yourself and describe yourself to the audience. Uh, Mr. Hoxick, you go first. My name is Brad Hoxick. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Um, I was born and raised in Transylvania County, which is in Bavard. I graduated from Bavard High School and later on att attended uh, college and received an uh, associate's degree in criminal justice. I joined the Highway Patrol in 1995. And received, um, was assigned here in Grand County in 96. When I came to Grand County, uh, the people here in the community, they welcomed me with open arms. They were very kind and, and helped me in any way. After a certain time, I knew this was where I was going to call home. I've been here since 1996. Later on, I met Lori. We dated, fell in love, and she's been the love of my life. And during my career in law enforcement, she's been behind me, stood behind me, and with my, me running for sheriff, she has supported that. And I'd like to take a minute and thank you for that. While employed with the Highway Patrol in early 2000, I was um, lucky to be appointed to go to polygraph school. Um, that opened several doors with my law enforcement career. I was, uh, had an opportunity to become a special investigator with Cherokee County Sheriff's Department. With that, um, I was involved with many investigations, uh, federal, state, county, local police departments. We uh, worked on cases such as murder, uh, large drug cases, sex crimes, rapes, child sex crimes. With my experience and education and, and interview skills, we was very successful in prosecution of, of a lot of those cases. As I've been talking about running for sheriff, people's been asking, Brad, you're retired. You don't need this. Why, why do you want to do this? My answer to them is my calling is to be in law enforcement and serve the community. And, and that's, feel, that's where I feel that I need to be. I want to see our people in the community safe. Kids in the school feel safe. The elderly in their homes feel safe at night time. I want them to be, know that if I'm elected, the Sheriff's Department would be have an open door and would be willing to come and talk to any of the officers at any time. Community involvement is very important in the Sheriff's Department. Thank you. Mr. Moody. My name is Russell Moody, and I'm a, a local here. I'd like to thank everyone that voted for me during the primary and then the runoff. It's now I'm on my third election, so how many is it going to take? It's my question to the Lord. <laughs> but uh, I, at an early age, I, I always had a burden for people and wanted to help people. And I became involved with the ambulance service or the rescue service which led to my service at an early age. Uh, I went to Western Carolina for a year, and then I transferred to Greenville Tech, Technical College in Greenville, South Carolina, and I was there uh, to further my studies, and I finished my training at Upstate EMS. So then I moved back home in uh, 96, 
six. No. Yes. Tracy Shaker. Yes. Mary and Teresa Lally. <laughs> I forgot to mention her last time. But we've been married this December 29 years, have two kids. But uh, it's always had a burden to help people want to do what's right. And so I came home and worked for the Hamlet Service for 10 years here uh, with Terry Slaughter and uh, Big Daddy Rabbit, who's with the Lord in heaven. Everybody knows Big Daddy Rabbit. Raymond Williams, he gave me a job here. So I was always grateful for him and Terry. Uh, and just always enjoyed helping people. And so in 2007, uh, well, actually 2006, I prayed about running for sheriff and ran and I, I won sheriff. So I was the sheriff here for. 2007 to 2010, and during that time I was able to go to the North Carolina Sheriff's Leadership Institute, which is one of the finest schools in the country for sheriffs, and so it was just a plethora of information, and so now I'm just basically self-employed. Here I am again, running for sheriff. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I ask myself that question at least once a week. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Moody, this question is to you. So you're running against a, uh, a candidate who has uh, had a lifetime of law enforcement experience. Uh, you, you've had one term as sheriff. Um, how are you more qualified to be sheriff? Well, during my time of sheriff, the Leadership Institute was, uh, like I said, a plethora of information. And, you know, you learn a lot. It's being sheriff and being a deputy or being a trooper, it's just completely two different things. Uh, at the Sheriff's Leadership School, you learn about the roles in the office of sheriff. Uh, you learn about budgets. You learn about uh, commissioners. Lots of different things. Uh, but, you know, I've always just tried to do what's right, put my faith in the Lord. Uh, a lot of things happened during my term. I learned a lot, uh, made a lot of mistakes, uh, a lot of mistakes that I regret. But you know, through those mistakes, you, you learn, God forgives, and uh, He gives people second chances. And I just like to say, you know why I'm talking about that? Let's just get the elephant. There's an elephant in the room here before I go. You know, I made a mistake when I was sheriff. But I, God get forgave me, you know. And that's been brought up several times. I knew it would be brought up. And you know, I made that right with God. And I made that right with my wife and all the other parties involved. Uh, and I'm glad I serve a, a Lord who's uh, a friend of sinners. Because I'm nobody perfect. I'm nobody special. People come to me and say, hey, Russell, you know, you did a great job when you were sheriff. And I stop them and I say, listen, it wasn't me. I could stand up here all night and say, I did this, I did that. What about me? The Lord was with me. He gave me the help. He gave me those connections. He gave me those resources. When I went to the sheriff's school, I met people you just wouldn't believe. I met the head of the FBI for the state of North Carolina. Marty Paul is, runs the Whisper Mountain Camp here in our community. They were friends. They went to college together. So, how, you know, how does that work? The ATF guys, they were Christians. We became really close, and they helped me with a lot of cases. So the Lord just really took care of me. And a guy came up to me a few weeks ago, and he's, he's like, you know, Brad's got a plan. What's your plan? My plan is to follow his plan. So whatever he wants me to do, that's what I'm going to do. And it worked out pretty good for me last time. So, you know, I just want people to know that when they bring my past up, you know, we're all sinners. There, you'd be lying if you, tonight you said that you're not. You know, we all make mistakes. Christ forgives us. But what people don't realize is that there's other people involved. Yes, I made that mistake, and that's on me. But my wife didn't do anything wrong. And she said twice during this election, you know, and it just kills me to hear her say it. She's like, you know, do, do people not understand that I have feelings? That it hurts me? I've actually prayed for the other family because I don't want to do anything to hurt them. And I've been extremely careful in the snowbird community. I've been careful with my signs because I don't want to put salt in that wound. I've prayed for them. 
And so, you know, it's just in Christ's hands, and it's just all I can do, you know. It's up to Him. If he wants me here to be sheriff, I'll be sheriff. If He wants Brad to be sheriff, I'm for Brad. Brad's always been my friend. Brad will be a good sheriff. And I'll pray for Brad. And I'm, I'm fine letting the cards fall where they may. Whether it's me, whether it's Brad, I just want to finish the race well in honor of the Lord. Mr. Hoxett, you've spent a lifetime in law enforcement, but you've never been a sheriff. How are you the better candidate going up against an incumbent sheriff? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Russell for the statement that he just made. Um, I know it took a lot of courage for him to, to uh, do this again and run, and, and my hat's off to him. Um, through my career, I've worked with a lot of other sheriff's departments and agencies, and I've worked really close with those departments. Uh, I've had some great friends, some great mentors that was sheriff. Um, I've had 30 years of training, leadership, knowledge, um, just all kinds of training that will support the department. Um, leadership, um, like Russell said, the sheriff is completely different than being a deputy, a trooper, or anything else. You've got to have good leadership and, and work with people and help them and help them get through personal things. Um, because they are employed. And uh, I, I've got a good working relationship with a lot of the other departments and the deputies that are here now. And uh, I think 30 years of law enforcement uh, helps me for this position. And uh, thank you all. Who went first last time? Thank you, Mr. Moody, for your honesty. <laughs> um, sorry, too soon. Um, <laughs> Mr. Hawkson, describe your uh, agenda priority. And for example, if you think there needs to be more deputies on the street, how would you pay for it? Or if you need to, if there needs to be more enforcement and drug enforcement, things like that, how would you pay for it? So please be specific in explaining how you will carry out your uh, agenda. Yes, sir. I, I do feel like they, they, they needs to be more deputies on the road. They need to they have more visibility. Um, I think we can um, reduce some of the higher paid positions. Um, basically saying that they're, we, we're top heavy and, and we need to move back towards the bottom. Um, we also need another school resource officer. Our kids are very bad. What we need their protection. And, and I know everybody's here um, value kids' lives, and, and they're very up there with me. Um, I spoke to a professional grant writer that does it for a living. Uh, she, she tells me that there's a lot of grants out there. There's a lot of overtime grants out there that uh, several counties get. Um, and I think through that program, we can bring more money to the Sheriff's Department and pay for the, a lot of the overtime extra positions and equipment that's needed here in this department. All right. Mr. Moody, same question. Well, I absolutely have an agenda, and that's the ball of Christ. And what I want people to understand is these people that are on drugs, people that are abusing their wives, the people that are raping these children and molest them, they need Christ. You know, the last time I ran, it was against uh, Mickey. I believe it was Mickey. And, uh, you know, people actually made fun of me. And they said, well, you know, we don't need a preacher. We need a sheriff. Well, I can speak from experience that you can kick a door down and arrest the bad guy and you tell him about Jesus on the way to jail because he needs it. No, I hate these people. They need Christ. And so, uh, one night, I, the first year in office, year and a half in office, uh, we had a task force, and it was the regional task force. It was me and a couple other counties. And then I had my own task force, just the ground county I had two guys. <clears throat> and it was very successful. The ATF was part of that task force where we could take the criminals to federal court. The state court, a lot of times, you just can't get a lot done. But when you get the feds involved, you can really you can get a lot done. 
And within the first year and a half, we put four of the biggest drug dealers in our community in prison. I'm not saying that to boast or brag, but you know, those people, they need Christ too. And so, just like with the ambulance service, what a great opportunity to share your faith. Because when those doors close, where, where are they going to go? They're strapping out of the gurney. So I pretty much say what I wanted to say. You know, but they were receptive to that. And, and like I say, it's not about me. I'm not up here saying that I can do this, I can do that. But, you know, it's just important to know that. And I always tell my guys, I said, listen, I said, if you, if you stop a pastor, you need to treat the drug dealer just like you would the pastor in our community. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. You treat him with respect. You show him Christ's love. And so it got harder as time went on. The first year and a half, you know, you'd stop probably seven out of ten cars. You'd find that. I mean, it's just a plethora. Back in, now that was in 2007, 2010. I know that they're spent and all out there now. But as time went on, you know, it got, it just kind of dried up because we put a hurting on them. But there was one guy that, that the whole time I was sheriff, I never did catch. And so I put the four biggest guys in prison with my team. It's not about me, it's my guys. I really had good guys. And so there was this one guy, and I caught him outside the sheriff's office one night, and I walked over. He didn't want to do anything wrong. I just saw him going down the road and walked out and talked to him. And I called him my name, and I said, Hey, so I just want you to know that God loves you and died for you. And I said, You may get away with what you're doing while I'm sheriff. I may never catch you. But if I catch you, I'll catch you fire and squire. But I just want you to know that one day you're going to stand before God and you're going to give a count for selling these drugs. And you just didn't know what to say. So, you know, it's important to, you know, me and Brad can here and talk about task force and grant writers and this and that and jails. But at the end of the day, for me, it's just about strictly about people and helping people. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Moody, you have two minutes for closing comments. All right, I'm going to give you an example. As I said before, we're all wretched people. And I think it's important to know your sheriff. And, and just honestly, you know, I, I want you to know who you're voting for. And so I'm going to tell you who I am. Uh, I'm not one, my faith is everything to me. When my dad's here, he led me to the Lord when I was nine. And my dad didn't say to me, Christ's blood saved me. Dad just sat down and explained to me that Christ died for me on the cross. And then he rose from the grave. And he could confess your sins, he just, and he forgave your sins. And he just said, you know, we're all sinners, and we all need a Savior. And you know what? I may not win this sheriff race tonight. I may just be here just for this moment, to say, God loves you. You know, that may be the only reason that God has me here. And that's okay. It's fine. But I'm going to honor Him. And so our world's a mess. And if you know the Bible, you know that we're living in the end times. And Scott was talking about groceries. It ain't going to get no better. You know, in Revelations it talks about you're going to work all week for a loaf of bread. And that's what we're doing now. And so, this is for all of us. This is for me, Brad, the school board, the county commissioners. This, we're just going to pretend. If I go over, I'll give you time to go over to This is man's law. Let's just say this is man's law right here. This is God's law. What gives Brad and I the authority to enforce man's law is God's law. And it's in Romans 13. If you don't know that, commissioners, which I'm sure you do, or school board, go on and read it. Romans 13 gives us that, that authority to enforce this law. But when man's word and his laws go against God's laws, that's when I have a problem. You know that saying, it's for me in my house we will serve the Lord? That's for me in my office if I win, we'll serve the Lord. You know, there's at least, I think, 300 people a day in our country that die from fentanyl. And did you know that North Carolina, for the past two years, has been second in the state for human trafficking? That's crazy. Did you know in Canada, for the last two years, they're arresting pastors for preaching the Word? Did you know that they're closing their churches? Did you know just in the last probably four weeks, to five weeks, they've arrested four or five pastors in our country 
the, the last one was in Ohio. And he was arrested for preaching against abortion. And they raided his home in front of his children and took him to jail. And so, as I don't want to say politicians, we're, we're not politicians as candidates for office. You know, we're going to have to take a stand. School board, CRT, critical race theory, it's coming. Transgender, they want our teachers to teach it. It's not happening here, but it's coming. There is a lady, she's a, she's a senator of Palmer's Women in Virginia. This week, she wanted to pass a bill to say, oh, she's been in Kelly as an example. If their kid comes home and he's a little boy, and says, hey, I'm down, I want to be a girl and change my name. The bill that she wants to pass says that they need to be arrested for child abuse if they don't support their child. That's crazy. My loyalties don't lie with Raleigh, Washington. My loyalties lie with Christ. Why would my loyalties lie with Washington when they don't even know the difference between a man and a woman? And they think a man can be pregnant. It's crazy. Crazy. So, what I'm here to tell you is school board, you may have to reject it. And I know what they're going to do. They're going to say, okay, you're not going to get no federal money if you don't do this. Well, what, what choice do you have? If most of y'all of you profess to be Christians, you have to do that. And as an elected sheriff, I use Patrick Hodel, he's here. If they call me tonight, and they, and they do. If, they, if FBI, ATF, SBI, the sheriff knows when they come to his county and he knows when they leave. It's never unannounced. They all, the sheriff always knows what's going on. If they call me while well, I'm sheriff and they say, Sheriff, you know Patrick O'Day, I know Patrick. Well, he's preaching hate speech out of his church. Sweet young. You're going to have to go arrest him. No. That's coming. And you need to make a decision in your mind now what, what you're going to do. I'm not going to go arrest Patrick. And I'll go a step further. I'm probably not going to let them arrest Patrick. you got to take a stand. Can I go to jail for that? Probably. Is it worth it? Yeah. Because I stand for Christ. And so that's coming. And I want our candidates to know that they've got to make those decisions. Well, I'm sure if not. And so that's my prayer is that God will give us courage strength and wisdom to always do the right thing. Sorry for running over there. Mr. Hoxett, two minutes to close. Are you four minutes to close? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. Russell, my, my hat's off too. That, that, was, that was great. That was great. Uh, I wish you the best on whatever happens. Uh, but I, I'm not Russell. I'm here for the people. I'm here for the Lord. Um, I have served this community for the past 27 years, and I want to continue serving this community in the capacity of sheriff. Um, there is some laws on the books that I don't agree with. Um, there's some laws that I, I will not enforce, just as if Russell just spoke about. Um, but I'm here. I'm here to save lives. I'm here to work with the people. I want the people to work for me and with me. And uh, the drugs is an issue here. And, and I believe it's going to take some law enforcement to get the drugs under control. Um, for example, Graham County Sheriff's Department, just, uh, they've been involved in a multi-agency drug task force. And my hat's off to them. They got two pounds of meth last night. So a lot of people don't know that there's this much drugs going on in the community. But certain families do. They've had deaths. And, and if we, myself, or Russell, can get in and save one life, that's, that's one life. And uh, with my experience in law enforcement, I, I have saved lives in my career. And I feel like I can continue saving lives in a different capacity. And I'd like to ask for your support in the Sheriff's election over in the day. Hey, one more thing before he sits down. <clears throat> I'm going to make a commitment right now. I run a clean campaign. And Brad, I promise I, I'm not going to do or say anything to put you down. I have. There's been some lies said this week, and we talked about it. And you know it wasn't true. You thank me for calling a couple weeks ago. There's just been some stuff said it's not true. I don't have anything bad to say against Brad. Brad was good to me when I was sheriff. If I had a problem, I could call Brad. He'd be right there. 
every time. No questions asked. So that's my commitment to him and to you guys. I'm not going to run or say anything to hurt Brad or put him down. This is up to the Lord. It ain't up to me and Brad. I'm fine with whatever the outcome is. I'm good with that. Hey, Patrick, will you, will you say a prayer for all the candidates and for God's will to be done? Amen. Father, Lord, as we come before you here tonight, God, we just thank you for everything that's took place. God, the decency of everybody. And Lord, this is our county. And God, we love each other. And Lord, I love everybody here. God, you know my heart. I don't need to lie about that. God, we just want what's best, Lord, for our county, our people. God, we pray, Lord, that... God, that you'd bless each and every one, and God, that your outcome would, uh, God, it'd just be your will, Father, be done in this. Lord, I just, God, we love you so much. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, we love this little town, this state. God, such good people here. God, our home been raised here. Father, we just want what's best, Lord. God, we know, Lord, that you've got what's best for us, no matter what the rest of this world does around us. No matter what they're doing in Raleigh, no matter what they're doing in New York, God, we can we can do what you want us to do here in Graham County, and that's the blessed part of living here. Lord, I just pray, God, here tonight, Lord, that you just help each and every one of us to honor you, live for you, and serve you. Thank you so much for salvation and a home in heaven. Lord, we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Them, so we don't have a mic, and we're here at 2 a.m. So, with that being said, thank you for coming out. You've heard from all the candidates, well, 90% of them, and it's your job now to go to the polls. Please grab start the way democracy is very important, and here's our other steps. If you don't vote, you can't bellyache about it. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out.